Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual college visit with the University of Tennessee. We have Amanda Woke here with us today, and she's going to be sharing with us all the great information about University of Tennessee. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Like um, she said, my name is Amanda Walk. I'm assistant director of first year recruitment for the University of Tennessee. I'm also your regional rep from Virginia. So I work with all students from Virginia, help you through the process, answer any questions you may have. So if you need anything at all as it pertains to the University of Tennessee, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. So first, just want to give you a little bit of a general overview about the University of Tennessee. Um, we are located right in downtown Knoxville. That is one of my favorite things about UT because even though we're in the city, our campus is very enclosed within the city. So you kind of get that small college town feel everything is close together very easily walkable but then you step off campus and you're right in the middle of everything um, we have over 90 restaurants within walking distance of campus we have great internship prep opportunities for our students since we are right in the city and there's just always something fun going on so whether you're on campus or off campus um, Knoxville is a great place to be um, as you can see by this picture um, we are located right next to the Tennessee River so we are one of the only places in the country where you can sailgate instead of tailgate so that's a fun tradition that we have on game days we're also about an hour from the Great Smoky Mountains so if you like outdoorsy things um, it's a great place we have over a thousand miles of hiking trails in the eastern part of Tennessee so anything you want to do in the outdoors is right at your fingertips um, as far as our location from other cities, we are about six hours from Richmond, so I think it's a great distance away from home. Um, you're far enough where you're going to get a completely different experience. I don't think there's anywhere in Virginia that really compares to the atmosphere that we have at the University of Tennessee, um, but you're still close enough where you can drive if you want to. Um, we do have an airport about 15 minutes from campus, so easy to get back and forth whether you're driving or flying. Um, we're also about an hour and a half from Asheville, North Carolina. We're about two and a half hours from both Atlanta and Charlotte, and we're about three and a half hours from Nashville, Tennessee. So lots of fun places that you can go on the weekends. We're also within a day's drive of half the United States population. So lots going on um, in the city of Knoxville. Um, next, just a little bit about the university. We do have about 25,000 undergraduate students. I think that's a great size. We have all the perks of a big school, big division one athletics. We're a tier one research institution. We have over 600 clubs and organizations and over 360 programs of study. Um, even though we are larger, it does feel a little bit smaller. Our average class size is around 30 and our faculty to student ratio is 17 to one. Um, so as I mentioned, we do have 360 programs of study um, that's broken down into nine academic colleges. We have our College of Agriculture, College of Architecture and Design, our College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest largest college. Um, we also have our Haslam College of Business, our College of Communication and Information, College of Education, Health and Human Sciences. We have our Tickle College of Engineering and the College of Nursing, um, in addition to our smallest college, which is the College of Social Work. Um, additionally, we do have both a law school and a vet school on our campus. Um, we are one of 30 accredited vet schools in the United States. Something I usually like to share with my students from Virginia is that we participate in something called the Academic Common Market. Um, if a major is not offered in your home state, you're able to go out of state and pay in-state tuition. So at UT, there are eight majors that are available for Virginia residents to get in-state tuition. Um, by far the most popular is supply chain management. That program is ranked in the top three in the country is one, and is one of our strongest business majors. So if you're interested in studying business, definitely check out supply chain management. Um, we also have one of the top nuclear engineering programs in the country. We are right down the road from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which is the largest Department of Energy research facility in the country. Um, other majors that qualify are going to be linguistics, interior architecture, um, disasters, displacement, and human rights, which is, which is a concentration in our anthropology program. Um, also educational interpreting, Portuguese, and sacred music. So these can be great options to reduce the cost of going out of state um, if you are a Virginia resident. Next, just want to talk a little bit about our campus life. Um, one thing I love about UT is all of our school spirit and just being on campus, that spirit is infectious. You walk around campus, everybody's wearing orange all the time. Um, we do have close to a 90% retention rate. So the majority of our students are coming back after their freshman year, which is usually a sign that students are happy and enjoying their, their time on campus. So just a few things about your experience as a Tennessee student. Um, you are required to live on campus your freshman year. Um, we have 14 different residence halls, various different styles of housing. Um, we have everything from suite style um, to even have one residence hall that has uh, double beds in your own bathroom. So if you come visit us on campus, we do offer housing tours so you can see a little bit of what we offer. Um, we also have what we call living and learning communities. So that is where you're going to live with students that you share a common interest with. 
typically it's going to be around your major. So for example, we have um, communities for our business students, for engineering. Um, that way you can live with people that you're going to class with. You can study together. There's programming. Um, so it's one way to kind of make a larger campus feel a little bit smaller. As I mentioned before, we have over 600 clubs and organizations, um, tons of things to get involved in. Um, we even have an Oreo tasting club on campus, but we do offer over 40 different club sports, also intramural sports, um, and about 25% of our students are involved in Greek life. Um, as far as student success, that's something we're very um, committed to at the University of Tennessee. Um, one thing that we implemented a few years ago that's been very successful is what we call our Vol Success Teams. Um, that is a team that is assigned to you starting your freshman year, and they follow you all four years, so you always have a familiar face that you can go to if you need anything. Um, your Vol Success Team is going to consist of your academic advisor, an academic coach, a one-stop counselor, and a peer mentor. Um, I think a lot of times at larger institutions, we have amazing resources that are available, but oftentimes students don't know how to get in touch with those resources. So especially your academic coach will help you to um, stay on track and just make sure that if you need help, you know where to go. We have a wonderful academic success center. They're going to offer um, tutoring, supplemental instructions, and things to help you make sure that you are succeeding academically at UT. Um, additionally, we do offer over 50 study abroad programs. Prior to COVID, we had students in every continent of Antarctica. So there are pretty much if there's somewhere you want to go, um, you can go at the University of Tennessee. Um, two other questions that I usually get when it, um, involving student life is that you can have a car your freshman year if you want to. It's definitely easy to get around if you don't have a car, um, but if you would like to bring your car, that is an option. Um, also, you are required to have an unlimited meal plan your freshman year, so you can go in and out of the dining hall as often as you want. Um, last year, we actually opened a brand new dining hall that's three stories. There's a big area with a fireplace and lots of different food options. There's even a Chick-fil-A in the bottom of that dining hall. Um, so in addition to our dining halls, we also have places like Chick-fil-A, Steak and Shake, Subway, and things like that. So you definitely won't go hungry on our campus. Um, one thing that a lot of our students kind of joke about is um, they don't like all the hills that there are on campus, but I think that's kind of an advantage because you can walk around campus, um, keep off your freshman 15, um, and enjoy all the good food that we have to offer um, on campus at the University of Tennessee. Next, something else that I love about UT, in addition to our location and school spirit, is just some of the really cool traditions that we have. Um, I mentioned our Vol Navy earlier. That's part of our sailgating tradition. Um, also, we, of course, have one of the cutest mascots in all of college sports. Um, that's Smokey. So you'll see a picture of Smokey there. He's very beloved on our campus. He um, Actually, we have 10 statues of all the previous Smokies around our campus. So if you come visit, um, definitely keep an eye out for all the Smokey um, statues that we have on campus. And then probably my favorite tradition is called Torch Night. Um, you'll see on the, the right-hand side, our torchbearer statue. Um, we are the only school in the nation that are volunteers. So that is something that we are very proud of. Um, we definitely have a volunteer spirit on campus um, and our torchbearer is kind of representative of our volunteer spirit and our commitment to serving others. Um, so every year at the beginning of school, all of our um, freshmen will go to our basketball arena. Everybody gets their own little torch and you light them together. That's kind of your symbolic welcome into our big orange family um, and a reminder of um, our commitment to be volunteers. Um, and so it's kind of cool to just be in the arena, look all around and see all the torches that are lit um, and also realize that you're coming into an amazing family, not just as a student, but also um, as an alum. Um, we have over 250,000 alumni throughout the world. Um, so you're part of a very special family. Um, one thing we say at UT is that you're a Vol for Life. So if you ever see the hashtag VFL, that means Vol for Life. Um, and that's something that we truly mean. Um, you're not just a Vol as a student, um, but at UT, um, when you join our family, your blood will run orange. So lots of really cool traditions that we have at UT. Um, so if you're looking for that big Southern school with lots of great traditions um, and school spirit, we could definitely be a good fit for you. So hopefully um, that's gotten you excited about the University of Tennessee. And so next, I just want to talk about what it takes to become a volunteer um, and the steps in our application process. Um, first, I'll talk about what's required for our application. Um, we do take both the Common App as well as our own application. We don't have a preference on which one you submit, whichever one is easier for you. Um, we also are going to require one essay. That's just going to be the Common App essay. So um, if you're applying to other Common App schools, then you should already have that done. Um, this year, we are requiring standardized test scores. 
Um, that is a decision that was made by our state legislature that they are revisiting after this year. So we don't have a definitive answer on whether test scores will be required moving forward. But for applicants this year, you are required to submit those test scores. Um, we will super score, so we will take your highest scores. Um, we also allow you to self-report, so you can just go in your GoVols portal and add your scores yourself. You do not have to have them sent from the testing agency. Um, something else that we require is a self-reported academic record. If you're not familiar with that, this is essentially where you're going to go online and enter all of your courses exactly as they appear on your transcript. It's kind of like the Common App and that you can fill it out once and submit it to multiple schools. So if you're applying to schools like Virginia Tech, Clemson, Penn State, Pitt, Florida, they are all also on the SRAR, so you only have to do it that one time and then link it to your Tennessee application. Um, it is very important that you complete this correctly because we are using the courses that you enter to recalculate your GPA. Um, at the University of Tennessee, we are not using the GPA that is on your transcript. We are going to use this recalculated GPA. Um, these are the courses that are going to go into it. We take 16 core courses, add a half a point for honors, a point for AP, IB, or dual enrollment credits. If you have more credits in a subject than what we're looking for, then we will take your highest grades. So say, for example, you have three years of foreign language. We're only going to use two years. So if you have, say, two A's and a B, we're going to use your two A's and the B is going to drop off. If you are missing any of these courses, then we are just going to leave them out of your GPA entirely. Um, as I mentioned, AP, IB, and dual enrollment courses, um, we will accept those credits. You can go on our website um, and search transfer credits, and there's a database of um, how your dual enrollment credits will transfer, or you can search AP or IB credits, and you can see what scores are required to get credit. Um, additionally, things that are optional as part of our application process are going to be letters of recommendation. They are encouraged but not required. And then we also require or um, allow you to provide a supporting statement if there's anything additional that you would like to include. If you've had any extenuating circumstances, if there's anything exceptional you want to share, you can put that in the supporting statement. But if you don't feel like you have anything to add, it is not required. It is an optional part of our application process. Next, important dates and deadlines. If you are a senior this year, our early action deadline has already passed. That's going to be um, back on November 1st. For juniors next year, November 1st, definitely encourage you to apply by that early action deadline. Um, it does get more competitive if you wait to apply for our regular decision deadline, which is December the 15th. So can't stress enough the importance of applying for early action. Um, I'll speak on the next slide about competitive scholarships in our honors and scholars programs, which you do have to apply by November 1st um, in order um, to be eligible for those. Um, another perk of applying early is that you will be notified early. Um, decisions will be released in mid-December for early action applicants and in mid-February for regular admission applicants. Um, typically, we don't deny many students that apply early, um, so there's no risk in applying early. You can continue to submit um, grades, test scores, things like that after you apply, um, so definitely apply early if you have the opportunity. Um, as long as you apply by November 1st and indicate on your application for admission that you want to be considered for competitive scholarships, then you will be considered for those scholarships. Um, we have actually four different honors and scholars programs. So if you apply by November 1st and you have at least a 3.8 GPA in either a 28 or a 1310, you will be invited to apply for those honors programs. So again, can't stress the importance enough of applying early um, if you have the opportunity because there are lots of additional things that are available to you by applying by the early action deadline. As long as you apply by December 15th, you are automatically considered for our merit scholarships. This year, we will start awarding a 3.6 GPA and either a 24 or 1160 on the SAT or ACT. As long as you meet that GPA and test score requirement, um, you will get a merit scholarship at the University of Tennessee. We do recalculate your GPA at the end of your senior year. So remember that the, these GPAs are based on what we recalculate. Um, so if you do better in your senior year, you can either increase your award or you can get one if you didn't have one before. Um, just kind of so you know, um, if you log into your GoVols portal, um, you can see how we recalculated your GPA. So if you've already applied or you're applying next year, you can see where your GPA stands and kind of where you are um, in regards to earning a scholarship. We will also accept test scores through July 1st of your um, after your senior year. So if you increase your um, test score, then you can increase your scholarship as well. So we are very flexible when it comes to our merit scholarships. Um, these are the awards for this year. They could change for next year, but for this year, um, these are the scholarships that we're able to offer out-of-state students. We would love for you to come visit us. Um, we do offer tours every day of the week and usually one weekend day a month. 
Um, we also have a virtual tour on our website and there are some virtual um, things that you can do with different departments. Um, if you are going to come visit, we do offer departmental tours. So just let us know two weeks in advance and we can try to arrange that for you. Um, I mentioned previously that we do have housing tours. So that's something else you can do to take advantage of your time on campus. Um, we also have events. All the events this fall are past, but we will have open houses in the spring and next fall. Um, so definitely encourage you to get to campus if you have a chance. Um, like I said, I'm the regional rep from Virginia, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you decide to come visit, I'm also um, happy to give you recommendations on restaurants and things like that to do. So if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, my name is Amanda Walk, and I am your admissions counselor for the University of Tennessee. So um, I hope that you have a great day and go goals.